This is the second video in my introductory series to Matplotlib. And in this video, we're going to cover scatter plots. Scatter plots are a visual aid, and they help us determine the strength and nature of a relationship between two variables. We're going to be covering the basics of creating scatter plots, including setting themes, adding a color map, creating a bubble chart, and then adding dimensionality. So I'm going to jump into a Jupyter notebook, and you're going to be able to download this notebook from a link in the video. And the first thing we're going to do then is set up our environment. I'm going to import NumPy, Matplotlib, and then the Pandas data reader so I can get some real data to work with. So we're going to use the data reader to download about three or four months worth of data for Google, Amazon, and then the gold ETF. And then we'll take a look at the first few rows there. Okay, so as advertised, we have data going back starting on August 1st, and then it looks like we just have the closing prices. Okay, so at the most basic level, we can just call a scatter plot. And we call it using the scatter method inside the matplotlib pyplot library. And then I just choose two columns. So when we run that cell, we see that, okay, it generated a scatter plot, but we can't really tell much from this. Is the price of Google really relevant to the price of Amazon? And it doesn't look like it is. Okay, but the change in price in Google may be relevant to the change in price in Amazon. And that's what we're going to find out by creating a new variable. And we're going to calculate in this new variable the instantaneous rate of return for each of these three securities. So when we run that cell, we see that we remove this absolute price and we've reduced it down to a percentage change. And then looking on the first day where we actually have data, which is the second observation, we see that, well, everything went down and that if I look at Amazon and I look at Google, they went down over 1% each. And then if I look at gold, it was pretty close to unchanged, but it was slightly negative. All right, I'm going to remove that first observation, which is not a number. Okay, and now we're ready to plot a scatter plot to see if the change in Google is relevant to the change in Amazon. Okay, so once again, we just need an X and a Y. And then we run that and we get our scatter plot and it tells a completely different story than the original one. All right, so now as we look at it, we see that, well, there's a general tendency that as Google goes up, so does Amazon. The relationship isn't perfect, but it's pretty strong. If it were perfect, there would be a perfectly straight line of points plotted. Okay, so starting with this as our base case, we're going to add some features to this scatter plot. The first thing I'm going to do is change the size of the plot. So I'm going to do that by importing the parameters module from matplotlib. Okay, I'm also going to suppress this memory address of the plot object that we created using the semicolon. So we'll take a quick look at that. Okay, so we get a bigger plot. Points are more spread out. And we'll set to work on this. So we probably want to add a little bit of visual appeal here and probably adding some kind of guide to how the points are plotted out here in space will be helpful. So for instance, if I plot a line up through the zero on the X and zero on the Y, I'll be able to quickly identify where these things are moving in unison, when they're positive, when they're negative, and when they're moving in opposite directions. So I'm going to go ahead and add that, and it's just going to be X V line, and all we need to tell it is where to originate. We'll do the same for the X axis, and then we'll see where that gets us. Okay, so it does add something to our graph. All right, it's probably not that helpful because, okay, it's plotting in the same color as the points and uh, then it's sort of actually taking a little bit away from the data. We can actually see the quadrants, though, that I was mentioning when they're moving in opposite directions and when they're negative, when they're positive and moving together. All right, I'm going to set the color of these lines. All right, and I'm going to use the RGB notation. And RGB is red, green, blue. And so the color using the RGB scheme takes a tuple and it takes three values, one for our red, one for green, one for blue. And the closer to zero they are, uh, then the blacker they are. And the closer to one they are, then the whiter they are. So if I want an absolutely black line, I would just put three zeros in here. If I want a white line, which I wouldn't be able to see, I would put ones. I'm going to set it about in the middle. So we should get a gray line. All right, I'm also going to set a line style. And instead of a solid line, I'm going to set it as a dashed line. All right, and since I'm going to do the same thing on the X line, I'm going to just copy this. 
Okay, and let's see where that gets us. All right, so a little better. Now we have the data taking front stage again, uh, the horizontal lines while adding a visual guide to where the data is, they don't detract from the actual data being plotted. Okay, a lot of times what people like to do is introduce a third variable, and on that third variable, uh, they may add some kind of color scheme. So we're not going to add a third variable, but I am going to add a color scheme to this. And so I'm going to edit the scatter line of the code here, and I'm going to add a color. And the color I'm going to add is the, the returns, and in this case, I'll, I'll add Amazon. Okay, and then we have to tell it, well, what's the coloration that you want? And that's with the C map argument. And I went ahead and looked this up so I could get one that was somewhat relevant to the data we're graphing. So I'm using spectral. I also included a link here out to the color map reference. And if you go there, you can see all the different color maps that may be relevant to the data you're trying to graph. So we'll go ahead and run that with the spectral color map. And we see that, okay, at the most negative case, we're getting red points. And then as we move up through zero, it's gradually getting green and then finally ending at violet with the highest positive values. All right, the problem we have here is that, well, these plots or points here in the middle are very difficult to see. So we're going to see if we can help that by adding a theme to our plot. Okay, so I'm going to use the style method, and I'm going to use, in this case, Seaborn, which is its own complete wrapper around matplotlib that I won't be able to get into in this video. But here we'll see what their theme looks like. Okay, so we can see the theme here, and basically it changes the background and adds some grid lines here. It doesn't take away from the data. All right, but we haven't really solved the problem of, okay, this data in the middle, it's a little easier to see, but it's still pretty hard to distinguish here. So we're going to add one more feature to the actual scatter plot. I'm going to change the edge color of those points. Okay, we can set it at anything you want. I'm going to just set it at black. Okay, so now once again, we can see that, okay, the data is front and center. We haven't really taken anything away from it. We have the color map. We have the color gradation. And now those points that were difficult to see before, uh, they're easier to see because we put a line around the outside of the points. Okay, there's another neat feature that we have here that's a pretty easy one-liner, and that's the color bar. All right, and this may be helpful when you're using a third variable. And let's see what it does. Okay, so basically it plots a legend about those color gradations. Now here we're just plotting a change against another change, so there isn't much to tell. But if you are using a third variable, all right, then you would be able to set some parameters on that color bar and give your viewer a bigger hint about what you're graphing. All right, so you can see that the default is that the color bar goes along the vertical. Okay, so if you don't want it on the vertical, we can set it on the horizontal. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do to this scatter plot is to move the limits around so that these line guides are sort of centered. So I'm going to do that by setting the Y limb and X limb, and I'll go negative 0.05 to 0 0.05. So plus or minus 5%. Okay, I'm going to do the same for the X. And then one last time, we'll see what that does to our scatter plot. Okay, so now we can see that changing the limits uh, moves the data around a bit. All right, now it sort of looks like there is a slight negative skew in these last several months of price changes in both Google and Amazon. Okay, another thing you can do with the scatter plot is to make what's called a bubble graph. Once again, you would probably be introducing a third variable here to represent the size of each one of these points. All right, so yeah, the data I'm using doesn't make this super relevant, but we can still use it. All right, so I'm going to set a variable. I'm going to set it equal to the absolute value of the returns of Amazon. Okay, and so just so you can get an an idea about what size is doing. I'm going to go ahead and plot a scatter plot again, and I'm going to plot it as the baseline. We'll switch it around, putting Amazon on the x axis. All right, and then I'm going to hard code a size in here. Okay, so you can see when I do that, we get a bigger point than what we got from the default rendering of the scatter plot. All right, and this marker size is a little odd. What it is, is that point is 100 pixels, or it's 100 square pixels in size. Okay, so the bigger it gets, obviously the bigger the point gets, but sometimes because you're working with those square values, you end up with something a little bit different than what you expected. All right, so let's see what I mean by that. So I set this variable s earlier as the returns of the absolute value of Amazon. I do want only positive values here. I don't want to try to plot negative pixels. All right, and so now in 
instead of hard coding in 100, I'm going to pass in that variable s. And when I do that, we basically end up with an empty plot. So what we're trying to do here is if you can just visualize those changes in Amazon, in all cases, they're less than one. So it would be trying to plot less than one square pixel. It's pretty hard to do that. So what I'm going to do is scale them. I'm going to scale them by a thousand. Okay. And so now when I do that, what we end up with is closer to zero, we get smaller points. And then as we move out towards the extreme, they get larger. All right. So once again, if you're working with a different data set, and you undoubtedly will be, you may be able to find a third variable that adds some good information to your graph when you plot it as the size of those points. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to show is, okay, what happens when we have a lot of data on the scatter plot? So, so far we've been working with, you know, around 70 or so data points. And okay, our scatter plot's pretty easy to read and interpret. But what happens if we go back and we have several hundred data points we're trying to graph? Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and download about a year and a half or so of, or almost two years, I guess, of uh, this of data for uh, Google and Amazon, calculate those instantaneous returns, and then I'll plot a scatter plot. Okay, so let's see what that does. Okay, so we can see in general, it tells about the same story, all right, even going back almost two years, as Google goes up, Amazon tends to go up as well. The problem is that there's this mass of points right here in the middle, and it's really hard to distinguish how much of the data is sitting in there. So we can sort of add a little bit of dimensionality to our graph. It look, it'll look like it's layered if I set this alpha variable. The alpha variable takes a value between zero and one, and the closer it is to zero, the more transparent the data. So I'll set it about in the middle and see what that does. Okay, so we can see right away that, okay, the data out at the extremes is kind of transparent. It just looks like a different color blue. But then in the middle, it makes it easier to see how much data is sort of being layered in there. And if I go down a bit more, all right, eventually we're going to get so close to zero that we're going to uh, lose the value of this alpha. But I'll go down a little bit more and see if that helps. Okay, so around point four, uh, we can start to see layers of data in there and then just how much of the data is getting uh, piled on top of each other uh, in, in, in towards the middle of this graph. Okay, so I hope that helps you get started with scatter plots in Matplotlib.